ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ಸ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎರ್ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಕ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ಯೂಶುವಲ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಟಿಲ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಕುಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಸೇನ್ ಅದಿ ಕೋಸಲ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸೈಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಬುದ್ಧ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ in uh, i can share can share nirujjana sabhavardha sabhavardha uh, this is called uh, just give me one moment maha bodhi uh you can go to uh, saga uh, sangyutta nikaya uh, first on tika right uh i think i'll i'll, I'll share it in the mahabodhi nirujjana sabhavatta if you can type this word uh raj sorry I'll, i'll just type it rajapana ಮಹಾಬೋಧಿ ನಿರುಜ್ಜನ ಸ್ವಭಾವರ್ಥ ರೈಟ್ ಕಿಂಚಿ ವಿಶೇಷ ನಾದಿಗಚ್ಚಿ ಸಂಯುಕ್ತ ನಿಕಾಯ ಟೀಕಾ ಬುಕ್ ಒನ್ page number 179 first paragraph so the paragraph is 120 right so this is the so it says that because uh, in the yanya sutta the sutta is yanya sutta let's say because there was going there was a, a huge sacrifice was uh, arranged by the king kosala for because of his dreams the dreadful dreams he saw so then he came to the buddha and also he had arranged uh, to kill a man to get his wife he has arranged the assassination assassination means he had given him a task that was unable to be fulfilled within one day it was difficult to be fulfilled and he closed the gates before that man came he asked him to bring some flowers from a very far away uh, pond had he not brought he was supposed to be killed so then the king could get the wife because then the wife has no husband so she was so beautiful and he had an uh, attraction towards her so then uh, the man stayed the night in uh, buddha's monastery i think jetavana then but in the night uh, the king heard some very strange noises uh, not a dream actually because he heard the noises and he was very afraid and the monks uh, the the brahmins the, his advisors were arranging going to arrange a sacrifice for for to 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 uh, release him from the uh, dangers the like the signs of danger so then he met the he also went to meet the buddha then buddha expounded him some dhamma the dhammapada gatha and some teachings and he said those sounds were uttered by four beings who are suffering in the hell because they have done the sexual misconduct so king was also having such a making such a plot to kill someone and to get his wife actually it was it would not count as sexual misconduct because after the husband is killed the wife doesn't belong to anyone anyway so he was going to do such a evil deed so then after listening to this he 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 buddha uttered the suffering those four people who were suffering in the hell were uh experiencing due to their bad behavior so then the king gave up the 
uh, his idea, wrong idea. The man was also sitting nearby the Buddha while the Buddha was giving the delivering the sermon. Then he, having uh, listened to this, that person uh, attained uh, Sota Pannahu. Then the subcommentary say, but the commentary says that by King, sorry, the subcommentary explains because we know that King Kosala didn't attain any any liberation. Uh, so the subcommentary says because of this Raja Pana, because the Raja, the King, Mahabodhi Nirujjana Sabhavatha. So this word has to be analyzed. Kinchi Visesan Nadi Gachi. Raja Pana Kinchi Visesan Nadi. He didn't attain any special attainment, right? Any special attainment. The reason is Mahabodhi Nirujjana Sabhavatta. So this has no other sub sub commentary. So there is no way to uh, uh, confirm uh, what was their in, what was the intention of the sub commentator. But most of our uh, friends, like even my advance friend, and also some other uh, my friends who are who are good in the literature, Pali and all, they all uh, explain this, uh, divide this Mahabodhi. That is the word Mahabodhi Nirujjana Sabhavatha. So this we analyze. Mahabodhi is the Buddha, uh, Buddhahood. Mahabodhiya Nirujjana. Nirujjana means cessation. The act of cessation. Mahabodhiya Nirujjana. Then uh, Mahabodhya Nirujjana Sabhava. So, so, sorry, uh, first we divide the word Nirujjana 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 uh, Nirujjana plus Sabhava. So, the one who has that nature of getting seized is called Nirujjana Sabhava. The person, this is a Bahubi Samasa. Then we can also add Mahabodhya. Uh, Nirujjanam uh, Jati Jatiya Sabhav. Yeah, Nirujjanam Sabhav. Nirujjanas Sabhavo. Yes, yeah, so. Mahabodhi Nirujjana Sabhavu. This is a person who has the nature, who has the nature of seizing with Mahabodhi. Mahabodhi normally we call, uh, one explanation for Mahabodhi is sometimes the tree, here the full enlightenment, Samma Sambuddhahu. Then plus Ta, Utta the nature so since he has the nature of getting seized with mahabodhi so he didn't attain any specification so it means he has already been destined because otherwise before we before a, a, a person get destined he can have different attainments for that you better you can go into it's also very some interesting topic uh, what about about the Ajata Sattu's uh, possible attainment? He is supposed to be a Pacheka Buddha in future. So the, why did the Buddha said that he would have attained the 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 Sotapanna hood had he listened to the had he not killed his father? Because if he is destined to be a Pacheka Buddha, he can never be a Sotapanna. So why did the Buddha say that? Some can say because he had the potency to do so. So he, but he was never destined to be a Sotapanna. Another opinion is of the teachers, which was which are not confirmed in the sub commentary. They say you can take uh, whatever is possible, whatever is suitable. Uh, the uh, Nikaya sub commentary. I can uh, share you the reference. It says uh, when a person being is not not destined, not niyata, it is possible that uh, a person uh, would end up being a savaka or before before going to be a Pacheka Buddha. So likewise, uh, the, then uh, uh, how to say uh, he uh, the why the king didn't attain Buddhahood according to this statement because he is destined to 
gets his nama rupa is destined to get seized with the attainment of samma sambuddhahood so so this is the statement that we uh, bring which is only found in one place as so far we have found and that is also sub commentary of the sangyutta nikaya this one word was the reason for for us to uh, believe or to consider that kosala was a bodhisattva and he is supposed he he is is destined to be a buddha in future yeah this is what i would like to share any any points on this uh bante yes uh, brother robin uh bante i would like to ask so if we assume that this tika is correct bante so uh, uh I just so i want to correct one point uh what uh, do yes. you mean by this tika is correct like this point is it uh yes like okay. i mean like if this uh in this point if the tika is correct like I assume that this kind of thing is like the historical account, Bante, because it is like only the Buddha that possible to know that someone is destined to be a Buddha, right? That, right, Bante? Yes. So, so because the Tika is composed a later period, Bante, like how do they have this kind of historical account, Bante, that is not mentioned, for example, in the Atakata previously? So, is it like something that is only circulating among the community of the monk but it's not written into the atakata like that but they, and then later it added yeah something like added. that yeah that is the only possibility that we can think about yeah there was okay, one that's that's statement because pacheka buddhahood of ajata sattu hmm. ajata sattu's uh, pacheka buddhahood the thing point i mentioned about that uh, distinct and non distinct is mentioned in the Diga Nikaya, uh, Tika, Book One, Page Two Eighty Five. Hmm. Uh, whether a person can be a Sota Panna on the way to be now, someone practices to be a Pacheka Buddha, but before he gets destined Niyata, he may end up being a Sota Panna because uh, that is what uh, his desire is to get enlightened as soon as possible. So uh, this is the reference for that. Uh, so it also says in the Diga Nikaya Samanya Palasutta, but Ajata Sattu was Buddha prophesied that he would be a. But sorry, excuse me, he would be a Pacheka Buddha in future. So then uh, the uh, the commentators mentioned this was uttered by the Buddha himself, but it was not included in the uh, text in the in the Tipitaka. By the councillors, the ones who did the council, council, the first council, so they kept it separately as a uh, commentarial explanation. So this also has to be, as you think, uh, because it has to be, it has to come from Buddha's mouth, Buddha's words, or uh, Arahantu could see the future. Uh, maybe then uh, his attainment is not that much far away. Uh, so anyone who can be see the future. would see that this person is destined to be a buddha one day so then that knowledge has to have circulated within the tradition and do have in incorporate in incorporated this into the uh, literature or maybe that was a, some some kind of knowledge that was circulating that maybe that was a guess that they were making i'm not that seems to be a very very harsh saying if i say it's a guess uh, so if we historically think this is something that was circulating within the tradition we cannot know its origin exactly from today uh hi pante yes dr ran uh who is the author of this tika pante this is dhammapala so he is like a, a much later than the uh, venerable buddha yeah, 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 yeah. buddha yeah 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 and there is a there is a controversy about this dhammapala because we can see a dhammapala in the commentaries of kuddaka nikaya as well and the same dhammapala was attributed with the sub commentaries also three sub commentaries diga nikaya madhyama nikaya and samyutta nikaya and we suppose that he died before he did the anguttara sub commentary so it was done by a sri lankan mahatera sariputta 
later time, the Angutra Sabdam. All the first three were done by one Dhammapala. Then the, the, the Dhammapala of the Kudaka commentaries, we find like uh, Petavattu, Vimanavattu, many sub commentaries were written by one person called Dhammapala. So both of them are later to, uh, uh, later to uh, the, the Buddha Gosa. And also it is evident that uh, some of the commentaries of the uh, Kuddaka Nikai, commentators have quoted from the Mulatika, have quoted from the Mulatika. So it is also assumed that uh, the sub commentaries for uh, commentaries for Kuddaka Nikaya are later than the Mulatika. Then the controversy is whether the sub commentator, this sub commentator who wrote the first three books and the commentator of Kuddaka Nikaya, most of the Kuddaka Nikaya books, not all, are they the same or not? Some argue that they were two different authors. Some research has been done, but traditionally, uh, uh, we ascribe uh, attribute both to the same person. And he was a South Indian, uh, well learned. Uh, there is also a hypothesis suggesting that he was the uh, principal of the Nalanda University, Nalanda University, uh, which is uh, not uh, accepted by most of the, uh, some of the other scholars, which is, I don't think it's very, very uh, strong argument. But anyway, because of some information and his knowledge, the vast knowledge, they, because there was a principal in the Nalanda University called Dhammapala. So Dhammapala name was very common. So they something that that was the same. And the next thing is because uh, in the Kuddaka Nikaya, uh, because we know in Mahayana tradition, we this reduced the paramis into six. 10 paramis can be reduced to six according to the Mahayana and other Mahasanghika tradition. So in Dhammapala mentions in the Kuddaka commentary that this even in Kano Theravadians, this can be reduced to six. So some say these are the, these are the reasons that some suggest that he had some uh, other knowledge in other traditions and he was a bit inclined towards them. So that is an objective analysis that they make. Uh, but as you ask the question, uh, he was later, but exactly if I say it's ninth uh, century, something ninth or 10th century AD. So Buddha Gosa was fifth century. So the gap is about 400 to 500 years be between these two. Okay, thank you, Panti. Yeah. And as, as all of you suggest that this is very strange. Why, how did this come into, end up in this Tika, which was much later and only one word can be found in the entire literature so far as we found and uh, which was such an important fact about King Kosala, who was one of the prominent disciples of the Buddha and which was not uh, included in any other literature. How did it end up here without, without any commentator, any su other sub-commentator mentioning about him? Or maybe like this information should be also worthy in it to be inserted in the commentary, right, Bante? That's because right. this That's is a very important. Worthy. It is worthy of inserting here. Yes. Uh, and then Bante, like, so right now to my knowledge that there are two versions of the explanation for this Bante, for King Pasanadi. So mm -hmm. the first one is this one. So he is destined to be a future Buddha. And the other is like, I, I heard that uh, his uh, uh, Vija is not fulfilled enough Bante. So he cannot attain the enlightenment. He has charana, but his vijja is not fulfilled enough. So yeah, yeah, another explanation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So among these two, for you personally, which do you think is the stronger argument? Uh, that a stronger explanation. Uh, I have read the other one also. I have read the other one also. Mm, I think uh, the second one or the first one was mentioned in the commentaries. I think. Not sure. I've read it in some books. Uh, reliable books. Mm, personally, I'm unable to say anything on this. Give a comment. I think on this. Uh, yeah, something in the sub commentary is also quite strong. And maybe it's a, just an opinion of a teacher. Uh, so if we go into the first explanation, it means he could have attained, he could have attained. 
because we don't normally say uh, in a past life bodhisattva meeting a different buddha he didn't attain because his uh, sila or vidya was not completed because he's destined to be someone else so his uh, well, however how much he tries his uh, attainment will be prevented because of his determination or a wish that is a different phenomena which prevents him so we don't normally say bodhisattva was lacking some wisdom so that's why he couldn't attain uh, sota panna ho arahantu bin sujata buddha's time or anodasi buddha's time because uh, we have a different phenomena to explain it so if there is an so if there is an explanation in the commentary we have to find whether that is <coughs> sorry thank you pardon so uh, whether that comes from the commentary or literature if you can do a research and give us some information in one so if that point that he was lacking vidya was found in the commentary we can assume very with a high probability that uh, the commentators were not of this opinion otherwise they would have said uh, because of his destination he would he didn't become a, uh, enlightened become enlightened so because uh, he was lacking some qualities so if that is found in the commentaries we can think that the commentators were not of the opinion that he would have been a buddha in the future but uh, according to this this is a different story and when you see the story of mallika and uh, pasenadi it seems that they have had a very strong bondage from past lives that but i'm not bringing it as an uh, conclusive evidence there is a story that uh, both of them were deities male and female and they were living to like having a nice life and one day they they got separated from each other because of a, because of a, a flood or something i don't know why could they couldn't cross the flood as deities anyhow they were they were separated for one night and they were really really sad about this incident and they afterwards they they made sure that they would not get separated even for one night they couldn't stay without each other so it shows that they were having a very very strong bondage between the two uh, kosala and mallika like ayasodara and siddhartha something something very very strong for mahakacha mahakasapa and vadya kapilani so that also is a indicator that, that and even the mallika didn't attain both of them didn't attain. mallika had such a, a high wisdom but uh, both of them didn't attain uh, uh, the uh, path and also it shows that the way the kosala has behaved in some occasion in some occasion it was it is also a little bit surprised him being a, a destined bodhisattva and meeting a buddha uh, would he do such things is it is it like he was making some mistake he was making some real uh, ob- obvious mistake in some cases so is it is it uh, is it possible as a bodhisattva i would not say it is not possible because still he is a putujana possibility is there but it seems like uh, the his character uh, did not fit it seems like to be a destined bodhisattva destined bodhisattva can do make some blunders but when they meet a buddha it's a, it's, a, it's a very spe- special special incident so these all are found so i'm unable to give you a, a answer for this only the two possibilities are found it seems when we look into the story if before we before we had this uh, uh, personally before i got this information this was found recently before i got this information from my friends i uh, i was convinced that he 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 lacked some wisdom according to the teachings but there is a possibility that he may aspire to be a buddha one day like not a destined one but one day but this statement indicates that he has been destined so still uh, i'm unable to give you a, a specific answer for this yeah ah uh, then bante like for them who is in myanmar how is their feel about this bante like for them who is like maybe like they've also seen the commentary and uh, so is with any myanmar monk on this okay bante uh and then bante so like like you said that there are some mistakes that are quite obvious so like this one when you uh say that he he was going to kill that man so that he could obtain that wife uh, her uh, his wife so is it possible for bodhisattva to 
do this kind of killing monday well, possible possible it is possible what i was saying is when normally a bodhisattva meeting a sammasam buddha normally their life changes dramatically changes it there can be some he may make some mistakes but after he is destined normally in normal cases he becomes a very special person uh, there is an incident he accused one of the buddhas called pussa we assume with the story that that pussa was not the, among the 24 who was before the 24 someone before, something incident that happened before he got destined so uh, but uh, killing and all these are possible we can you can see in jatakas like he once uh, he was a drunk like uh, addicted to drinking and doing all the bad stuff and he even uh, seduced one female ascetic seduced mean he 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 destroyed her sila and brought and made her to be a, a person indulged in sensuality so such things he has done the bodhisattva has done such things so so it so it is possible it is not possible it is not not that the uh, destined bodhisattva would always do good sometimes he was a uh, mass uh, chief of a, of a, among robbers thieves he was the mastermind in doing so like godfather so uh, such things are possible for a bodhisattva but uh, when they meet a buddha normally i would expect something special would happen uh, because the Path, because such things normally bad things happen because of his uh, weak patisandhi in some lives and also bad association, uh, increasing of defilements and so forth. But when you meet a Buddha, the advice is there. It's very clear. The path is very clear, and the Buddha's effect is also very strong. So it makes a huge transformation in anyone's life. Anyone's life meeting a Buddha. So nothing to say about uh, Mahabodhi Sattva who had uh, fulfilled the. Uh, lot of paramis and become a distinct person but these are all still uh, possibilities probabilities we are talking not not exact answers as as the sansara is very strange the mind is quite strange the defilements are very strange anything is possible in putujanas okay bante uh bante baby last questions as uh, i think it's still related bante so mm-hmm. once i've heard that uh for bodhisattva he could break uh any any precept except the musawada bante so is this statement correct bante that is uh, according to the commentary the mat musawada is atta banjaka musawada not all musawada you can see this in the commentary atta banjaka musa uh, atta banjaka musa means that would uh, bring this uh, advantage to others like for instance uh, i would say give a false ev- false witness be a false witness and then because of my witness someone would lose his life someone uh, someone honest would get uh, like 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 not the truth because of my lie someone would lose again like would, would lose his land lose his life uh, innocent person the i would uh, my false witness would uh, support the wrong doer so such things he would never do he would never do but it doesn't mean that as a child uh, being a person would say a joke or do some 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 uh, lies it is it is not it is not that uh, he would not do such things this is like atta banjaka musa because some strong lies that would truly harm others such such false he would not do even a person now if we give a false witness become false give evidences we know we feel it that it's it's something that was done very bad anyone would feel that uh so such uh, things he would never do even even uh, don't having any idea about buddhist teachings still he would not do such a thing because these are basic ethics of any human being okay bante thank you very much bante Ah, uh, hi, Pante. Yes, no problem. Yeah, I have like a three related questions. <laughs> yeah. So, ah, uh, the first one is about ah uh, the King Pasenadi Kosala. So he should be mentioned in the ah uh, the book, ah uh, Chronicle of the Buddhas by the uh, Sayadawji, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Have Have you read that book, Pante? Not completely. So I I. 
I believe there should be a reference in there, right? Because if you yes, said that the, uh, yeah, so I, I wonder if there is a reference, you know, is he, what, what reference did Sayadaw give in, 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 in the case of King Paseda di Kosala? I, I still really like, like to read that entire volume, entire series, but I didn't have time to uh, go through it. That's the problem. Otherwise, I would truly love to have some time to find on it. So surely, if, if in that book, there must be some reference. Right, right. Okay, thank you, Bante. So now the, uh, there are two re related questions about paramis. It's also related to this. Okay. So there is one opinion saying that in order to fulfill the parami, uh -huh. then a person have to make a determination or the yeah determination that this uh, like wholesome deed I'm doing, it had to be for the fulfillment of the parami. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that wholesome deed is just a normal wholesome deed. Is that correct, Ah, uh, this is how it has been mentioned in the book. So. So these also need some explanation. Now there are paramis. When we say parami, uh, sorry, sorry. Parami is with, uh, uh, I'll just say kusala, right? Kusala with a uh, wish, right? For the, then this is for the attainment. Parami is what is necessary for the attainment. Now, then we do some kusala uh, without a wish. Now, <clears throat> uh, are they supportive for the attainment? This is the question. So, parami is something which supports the attainment. So, we normally say uh, parami is made with a determination may I be a Buddha with this and this. So, he uh, he could directly facilitate the attainment. Then kusala or wholesome deeds or wholesome qualities without a wish, are they going to support the attainment? Right? This is the, or it is going to not support any attainment. This is the, I think, this is the basic uh, 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 philosophy behind this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, topic. So some would say, no, it has to have a determination. It has to have a wish to get the attainment. Otherwise, it would bring only benefits in the sansara, not the facilitation of attainment for liberation. So only these are considered as parami. This is normally uh, what is mentioned as parami. Then we find, if you read the Jatakas, more in some cases, he had done the good deeds with the determination of the Buddha. And in some cases, he was just a normal person. And even doing some other activities, which are also mentioned as Jatakas. But it doesn't mean that all the Jatakas were Paramis, uh, because some were just incidences also. So it's not, uh, uh, we normally say Jatakas are the stories in which the Buddha fulfilled his Paramis, but some, some are just incidences also mentioned. There the Buddha is found. He, he was an observer in some cases. Just a, a tree deva would observe the incident and just he brought the incident to match with the present situation. All have a very good message, but it doesn't show that the, in all the case, all the Jatakas, Buddhas were fulfilling Paramis uh, as we would expect. Then, uh, what about the wholesome deeds that are done without the uh, attainment? Now we, we find a Jataka, if you go into the Jataka, Buridatta Jataka. Buridatta Jataka. He, uh, it says it was one of his Sila Paramis. So, but when you read the Jataka, we find the, the, the king serpent, who was the Bodhisattva, determined to fulfill Sila because he wanted to be a Sakha. He wanted to be the god of deities. But in our tradition, we normally ascribe this to his Sila Parami. So normally the Sila Parami should be with the determination, according to the, if you go to the uh, commentary explanation, with the determination to attain the Buddhahood or uh, the liberation, if someone practices Sila, this is Sila Parami. But so Buridhata Jataka, the entire Jataka is considered as Sila Parami, but it says his main motive was to become the Sakka because he goes to the heaven of the Sakka with his father, the serpent king, 
and he saw the glories and he thought yeah i would i would uh, i have to practice sila to come there so motive was to get the sensual pleasure but it has been described as the parama then this has more the uh, evidences from a story about you can see in the uh, dhammapada story i think you all of you most of you have heard that five people were listening to the dhamma talk given by the buddha and five were behaving in different ways one was drawing one was sleeping one was drawing lines in, on the earth one was shaking a, a branch uh, of a tree one was looking at the sky and one was listening to the dhamma then uh, after they all of them went the ananda who was fanning the buddha while he was delivering the discourse asked him why why were such uh, differences in in the behavior of the all five while they were listening to a discourse given by some some buddha so he buddha mentioned that was because of their vasana or habits of from the past life so uh, one was a snake and he had the vasana or he had the uh, habit of sleeping a lot so even while dhamma clock was given he stepped there one had the ha- had become a earthworm so he was growing lines on earth one was a monkey so he was he had the habit of dealing with the leaves uh, branches so he was shaking a branch one was an astronomer astrologer astrologer he was observing the skies always always like to look at the look at the sky then the other one was a one a brahmin who studied veda so 500 lines so we know already know veda is something considered as uh, some information accepted in the buddhist teachings you can say uh, but most of the teachings are because they are related to the self so we normally just uh, exclude them from the buddhist teachings and we say vedas doesn't have much essence so he has been studying veda so according to the buddhist perspective studying veda is not a uh, is is developing wrong views according to the buddhist perspective but he has been studying this so being a student he was well attentive to the teacher memorizing keeping them in mind retaining in mind so all the good wholesome like efforts were there even while he was studying the wrong doctrine and the buddha mentioned to venbalan that this was the reason for this person to be attentive while i was giving a discourse so he attained ended up being a sotapa so this shows that so this act of studying the vedas which had he had no intention at all that that may this studying would facilitate my attainment so he was just following a wrong doctrine the following the gods so even that act has facilitated the attainment has facilitated the attainment so even without a wholesome deed wholesome wish attainment was supported so then now when we look into the jatakas we find in some cases the bodhisattva didn't have any aspiration to become a buddha in some life but he had done lot of good deeds without a wish and this incident is a good evidence to show that even without a wish they can facilitate the attainment now if we go into the basic criteria of parami which facilitate the attainment both should be considered parami but then it's obvious that if someone did uh a call some deed with a wish surely it would support greatly for the attainment but if some whole some deeds or qualities were developed without without having such a wish even that would facilitate the uh attainment so my personal point of view is that uh if someone has started the, the journey to become a, a, a bodhisattva or a, a savaka bodhisattva whoever uh with a wish with an intention to go towards that uh, whether he is destined or not whatever wholesome acts that they do during this course of sansara would one way or another support his path support his path so even without a in, without a aspiration the bodhisattva being a doctor being a teacher practicing these wholesome deeds wholesome qualities have surely for sure facilitated his enhancement of his wisdom and good qualities so that is how i look into the paramis so i would not say that only the things that were done with a wish would facilitate the attainments but uh, any good quality uh, after we uh, we started to walk upon the path towards the liberation would facilitate our attainment that is how i think about this matter Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Saru. 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 Pante. Yeah. I also think like uh, that way because we know that during sansara, for let's say a bodhi bodhisattva, 
Uh, he's a bodhisattva, but it's, it doesn't mean that every life in Sangsara, he remembers that he's a bodhisattva, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. So thank it, you, Bante. Yeah. So if I, I personally feel it's, it, it, the information is much enough to conclude that idea, that uh, it is not necessary uh, right. that uh, you have to have a wish for that. But it's obvious if you wish and do it, it has more power. That's right. obvious. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then also, yeah, your explanation is already explained number, number, uh, question number three. So, yeah, I'm done. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bante, I have another question, Bante. So, like, is it like, for example, uh, I just know Dhamma recently, Bante, and I know about the liberation, Bante. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, after I know that, I aspire that I want, I hope that I can be liberated, Bante. So does it mean that uh, all the other kusala that I have done before, Bante, uh, mm -hmm. that is also become the supporting condition, Bante? Even though at, at, the, at the initial doing of that kusala, I'm not aspiring for liberation, Bante. So is it triggered by the, even can be triggered by the later aspiration, Bante? Something like that? Uh, you mean, uh, is it, uh, yeah, would need to some more clarification? Uh, uh, yes. So like, for example, like I have done, uh, many kusala before I know Buddhist teaching, for example, Bante, and then mm -hmm. at one, and then at one moment, I know the Buddhist teaching, I know the goal is for liberation. And then at that time, I aspire to be liberated, Bante. And then maybe I do the kusala uh, for, this, for this purpose, Bante. So I have the wish. But mm. so is it then, it, is all it possible? The, all the all deeds that you did before the aspiration, right? Before ah, yes. So yes. What, are they supportive or what do you mean? Uh, yes, so are they can also become support, uh, become supportive, Bante, for the attainment, Bante, even though the initial doing is not for the purpose of liberation, Bante, the previous yeah. kusala. Yes, so but, but when you do the wholesome deeds with a wish that is more supportive, that is obvious, like the force is too much because we are doing it for such a purpose, other wholesome deeds that we have done without such a wish are also supportive, for sure also support you oh that, okay that, but yeah that is that is for sure because now for instance if you think if you think about uh, the uh, cause and effect rule right now wow uh, someone gets now one more thing is that we cannot say that you got to know the liberation only in this life maybe you had some practice something in parami sansara i certainly believe that that is how it has happened that you have had practiced in past life. And that was that you took, someone took, may take time to get to know Buddhist teachings or the path to liberation in a one life. It may take time. But it doesn't mean that in the entire sansara, this is the first time we got to know about Buddhist. We cannot see about the past life. The effects of the past life were there. So normally a person who goes into the teachings quite deeper, uh, most of the times, the ones who have uh, had experience in, in, in past lives. That's why normally we, uh, we uh, explain about the paramis of someone. So therefore, uh, we should not come to a conclusion that uh, this was the first time that we uh, thought about the liberation. That is the first thing. This is not the first time in the sansara. Uh, most of the cases we have had experience in past lives also. Then, uh, now if you think the cause and effect rule, now even you think, now imagine if this was the first time you get to know about the Buddhist teachings. So why that the wisdom was able to understand that this is correct and wrong? There was a great support from the past kusalas that we have done. So therefore, to know the Buddha, to understand the Buddhist teaching was correct and to walk upon that path, that wisdom has a great support from the wholesome deeds that we have done in this past in the, in the, in the previous time, even though we didn't, we didn't have such an aspiration. So therefore, all the wholesome deeds that we do 
in 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 a certain life or in the uh, recent sansara do facilitate do facilitate for the increasing of our wisdom that increasement increasing would surely support us to understand the teachings properly and also the efforts that we put when we start practicing if we have had all some efforts even some effort in the unwholesome side would can have such a such a effect because it says a uh, bodhisatta because he has fulfilled divya to a greater extent than normal person when he goes for a war or when he starts to fight he is not a ordinary soldier no one can stop it's very difficult to stop him he would fight till the end of his life so some wholesome qualities that have been developed has facilitated to for him to do extreme level of akusala it's like the miscellaneous one the effort and so forth and sometimes because he has developed high wisdom when he comes to do unwholesome deed he can think sharply and try to uh, figure out how should i do uh, it in a more uh, harmful way and so forth so it means it's not the wisdom has uh, done the act there is such kind of a potency that grows within us so therefore even some unwholesome acts the effort and so forth which were used in unwholesome act unwholesomeness is not going to support for the liberation uh, some like like sometimes the attachment would can uh, attachment to the liberation can be a supportive factor uh, like the act, act, like things like dosa are completely against the liberation but uh, the efforts that we had in certain acts supporting the families supporting the country and so forth so these things can also be supportive so it's 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 a we, we have to think it like a, like a like a mixture without much distinguish distinguishing uh, now if you think about some some stories of the jatakas there was a story that sariputta was very loyal to his master being a parrot the his task was to steal to steal a, a mango from a tree that belongs to the demons so he went there and was trying to steal and he was caught and he was not afraid then they asked why did you come you you are you are coming into your death so he said no this is my duty i want to fulfill my master the, the 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 obedience to my master and in the jataka it seems that was explained as one of his good qualities he was doing stealing so so then in some cases it is very difficult to distinguish whether this act is a complete kusala or akusala but that uh, his willingness to sacrifice to his master the selflessness selflessness means his, his no selfishness uh, sacrificing to his master has been considered as something valuable so when we come into this parami uh, topic it's very difficult to to uh, distinguish whether uh, act is entirely kusala or mixed with akusala and whether this would support or not surely uh, it's for sure all these acts have a support for the liberation a certain kind of a support if if there are some admirable qualities but it's very difficult to distinguish whether this is kusala this is akusala how could such an act of stealing would be would be supportive for his uh, liberation and so forth so therefore it's uh, i would normally say if someone is uh, developing certain good qualities whatever the act is there is a uh, possibility that they would support the uh, liberation okay bante thank you very much bante yeah if you look in with this uh, uh, with the understanding if you look into the jatakas you will find that that it's very difficult in some cases to distinguish whether is how can this be a parami fighting without stopping fighting is killing killing is boy is a killing panadipata you would expect someone to do something completely wholesome but but it says a bodhisatta would never stop that was explaining about like virya it was like a virya parami that that's what it has been indicated adithana parami now for instance uh, if you look into the jataka of uh, uh, that jataka i forgot uh, he was a, a low caste person and became a, a, a ascetic his name was uh, um, matanga jataka matanga you can look in this it's quite long jataka 
but very nice. Uh, Matanga Pandita. Uh, so he, he uh, Yasodara was was of high class, high clan. This was a uh, Bodhisatta was of a low, very low class clan. Then uh, the Yasodara's attendants, the servants, workers, threw him away when they met in the road each other. They they hit him and uh, disturbed him. And Yasodara was also highly conceited that she considered seeing such a person was a bad omen. Bodhisatta determined. Surely he would have some attachment to the lady because of sansaric affection. Uh, he decided, determined, no, I will surely get this lady. I will surely make this lady my wife because of a conceit and so forth. So that was a mixture. It was a mixture like there was love, there was hatred. And then what he did was he went and slept in front of Yasodara's house without any uh, determining to die. If the wife, daughter was not given, I would die here. And there was a custom in that region or the, those times, if a low caste person of such caliber, like the Bodhisattva was, died in front of a certain house, died in front of a certain house, the house in which he died in front of, in front of which he died, and also seven houses to right and left, seven houses to right and left, altogether all the 15 houses, from that point to both sides would be would be transformed into that caste. That was the custom, which was very, very, very strange. So what happened, the Bodhisattva was determined and uh, it says that, the book says that his determination was so strong that he his ability of determination, because the Adityana Parami, that uh, he would not give up his uh, determination till he achieved his task. And no one was able to take him away because of his uh, parami, like the, the, like the meritorious glory that he had as a special being. And then what happened, the, uh, the Asodara's father was never willing to give her child to this person. But the neighboring houses were, were pressuring, pressurizing him. If this pan man died, even we also have to go into the low caste. So please give your daughter and release this person. Otherwise, we are going to suffer. Don't, don't uh, harm us. So because of this pressure, and it was not able to move him, eventually, he, she, she, Yasodara had to be given to the Bodhisattva. So this is considered as one of his determination. Later, he, 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 he did support the um, uh, Yasodara. He became an ascetic and he showed the psychic powers and Yasodhara became the most prominent lady in the entire India, uh, being the wife of a Brahma. Like she, he was considered as a Brahma because of his mirac uh, miracles that he performed. And she became such glorious in the end because in the beginning, she lost all the glory that she had. And the Bodhisattva was so compassionate towards this lady. And that's why that which triggered him, triggered him to go to the uh, forest and meditate and get the jhanas and uh, restore the glory of Yasodhara back. So, uh, so now you can see these stories are mixed with wholesome unwholesomeness like natural world. So because when we study Buddhism, we know this is good and this is bad. But when during a non-Buddhist time, it is very difficult to distinguish what is correct and wrong exactly because we don't have such a, such a perfectly defined doctrine. So how do a person, a arahant, yeah, Bodhisattva, we can say maybe he, he possesses a certain wisdom from sansara that he is able to distinguish what is good and bad. But what about the savakas? How do they perform paramis for 100,000 eons without meeting a Bodhisattva? So uh, do they have that, uh, yeah, they, after they become destined, they know there is a sense of good and bad. But it's not very clear cut that like, like, like we have. So these acts they do are mostly mixed with wholesomeness, unwholesomeness, but they all facilitate the liberation. So that's what, uh, that is what the literature says when we observe it in such a manner. So why the question comes to us, now we have a very defined doctrine. This is correct. This is wrong. This is, uh, the Akusala has affected the Kusala. Kusala has affected the Akusala. These kind of uh, explanations we have. So then we think about a very pure type. Parami should be considered very pure 
to 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 for to consider as part of it. Then another point you can see in the uh, if someone is further interested in fulfilling uh, about these paramis, uh, you can go to Charya Pitaka. Pattakata. Go into an explanation called, uh, as I said, Pakinaka Kata. So this says about Parami, Upaparami. And Paramatta Parami. So there are various explanations. What is Parami? What is Upaparami? What is Parami? No, most, most famous is we do good deeds, sacrificing our uh, external things, including our children and so forth. Uh, Upaparami is we don't consider about our bodily parts to fulfill the Parami. Paramatta Parami means we don't consider about our lives. Another explanation is Parami is the wholesome deeds that are done. Uh, uh, sankilita. It means they are affected by akusala. They are affected by akusala. It's not that they are completely pure. So you can see this in the Charya Pitaka Attakata. So even some acts are mixed with some unwholesomeness can still be considered parami according to that. So therefore, uh, that uh, that is a very nice explanation that should be uh, brought should be made famous. This 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 explanation, the second explanation, is not uh, uh, given much uh, much uh, emphasis. If we can bring that uh, uh, definition uh, make popular among the person people Buddhists, that that then we feel like uh, we can have fulfilled the part. We we feel much ease in doing such things. So there are various definitions. According to one definition, uh, acts that are done, sankilitta, it means there are some personal uh, defilements are also affecting such acts. So those are called parami. They are not strong, but still they facilitate the liberation. Yeah, I think I have given some, lot of information on this, yeah. Bante is the, like the mixture, it's the natural, like natural occurrence Bante because like our mind moment is very fast so it's like possible like it will be mixed between the kusala and akusala right there Bante so and then still there is the kusala inside Bante uh, kusala mind moment no no in one mind moment oh no no not one mind moment Bante but another mind moment Bante yeah, yeah, yeah it can happen like like we may do a dana like for example giving a dhamma talk Right. There can be some uh, within within the person. They he may appreciate. Oh, I'm giving it well. Uh, I will be famous by this. Some some attachment or craving can occur. The speaker has to be mindful not to uh, be swayed away from such thoughts. They are unwholesome thoughts. But some such thoughts can happen. So what happens that the, the, the dhamma talk, the value of the dhamma talk decreases. But it doesn't mean that that dhamma talk is not qualified to be a parami. It is qualified to be a parami. So, so uh, while doing the wholesome deed, time to time, unwholesome thoughts may occur and uh, diminishes its uh, value, but still it is a parami. It, it, it is a wholesome deed. Uh, yes, Bante. And since so that I rem We normally define this as, we can. I, I would term this as kamme katta. Ekatta, ekatta means oneness, right? Kamekata means now when we are doing a wholesome deed like kusala, kusala, lot of kusala. Talk. Now if we think about giving a dana, right? So while we give a dana, we, we arrange it and then, then there are some bhavanga in between and some akusala thoughts which are not related to the, uh, because now for instance, someone arrange a dana and uh, which is which should be given in few days. So in between, he he do some akusala act. He goes a trip, for instance. So these are not. Uh, this is the kusala, the dana. Uh, he is gathering now. In between, he is doing some akusala. Now again, he is working on the uh, kusala. He may work. He may be working on the kusala. Then again, some akusala because. Uh, Maybe they are uh, about some other reason. Then even there can be akusala 
related to this dana like oh is not it is not go, not worthy to uh, uh, spend such money and so forth then we also have kusala and for instance this is the time we did the kusala uh, then we have bhavangas in between and then we end up the kusala right so now there have been lot of chittas occurring in between even some akusalas were occurring uh, while he was uh, doing the uh, akusala, uh, kusala but when we count the kusala what is the exact kusala uh, only these wholesome thoughts that were done with the intention of giving a dana right all only they are considered separately they are considered as the wholesome deed in between thoughts which are not related are not put into dana and this akusala thought which was indeed something related to the dana is also not counted as a part of the dana they reduces the good uh, strength of this kusala they reduce the strength of this kusala it's not that they are part of the dana so likewise even someone do is this is a parami parami is the kusala and also in between there were some unwholesome thoughts that thinking that it is not necessary to do such parami that would surely reduce the strength of the kusala and there have been some other thoughts in between which are not related so then only this has become parami and this would have reduced the quality of the parami so this kamekata means even such mind moments have happened separately only this underlying ku is considered as the dana not the red ones and not even this akusal is not a part of the dana so what has become parami is the underlying part so bante is this way can also be applied for the case of the parrot bante like he is stealing the mango but like the the lo the loyalty to his master like that and his uh, effort to fulfill his duty is like the kusala mind moment bante so and then but the stealing is akusala like that bante then uh, we have to consider even though he is loyal whether that lo loyalty i would call that there would be some wholesome thoughts like i am fully sacrificing myself gratitude would have been there so such wholesome mind moments would have been there for sure i would say not i would not say no but if when he plans and do everything that is purely akusala stealing has to be done with pre planned mind so all are akusala thoughts for sure uh so the gratitude and all these would have been kusala would have been kusala i would say uh, because they show some good qualities and even while he was doing the stealing there should be a lot of effort akusala effort so when we say the effort alone even though they are in the akusala side if we take the effort effort alone uh i see that there is uh, that effort can also be uh uh, uh upanishad whenever he do the kusala that he has given the effort faculty to some level uh not directly supporting some kind of a effect will be there some kind of a supportiveness can be there i think okay bante uh, and then bante since i remember that you mentioned that kusala is generally we can say stronger than akusala bante mm -hmm. so is that also a factor that count in that for uh, even that the act is the mixture between the kusala and akusala but since like the kusala is stronger then we can say that the general outcome is like it's kusala that day no no it's not because of that it's not because of that because this was a uh, we have to take this act as a one thing that's why i say ekatta this is a one thing this act is one thing it is intention is to give dana so the entire act is a kusala that is why we call it it's not because kusala is strong or kusala is weaker this entire act is a kusala act dana is a kusala act so this entire thing is considered whatever in in blue color is considered as kusala so it's not that we have to it's not that we, this is why ekatta i use the word ekatta it's not that you have to discuss them separately as one as one by one this is the one dana kusala so in the dana kusala is a wholesome deed there can be some akusalas in between which are not related we just exclude them and some akusala thoughts which are related to dana even so they would 
they they are not going to they are not different kamma they, they are not a different kamma pata kamma means a different complete act though they are also mind they reduce the quality of dana that's how we explain we have to have that ekatana ekatana means considering this as a one thing okay bante thank you very much bante uh, hi bante <laughs> just because you 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 yeah you brought this up so um how, how should we uh interpret this in terms of the uh, classification of gamma into four uh white gamma black gamma black and white and non-black and non-white so in this case is it black and white Bante? no this is kanha gamma sukha kanha sukha akanna asukha right Kanna is wholesome deed, sukha is uh, sorry, unwholesome, wholesome is sukha. Kanna sukha, the, according to the tradition, is not specific kamma. It's not a specific kamma, not this explanation. They say a person who has done good and bad. Consider about a person who has done good and bad both, collectively taking them, and they uh, this uh, they would bring good and bad results in, in a future life. So this kanna sukha is connected to some, uh, if you go into Janusoni Sutta, uh, of uh, Anguttara Nikaya 10, Anguttara 10, uh, according to this, uh, I think you we studied this in DAB, a person who has done good and bad, uh, if he born in the woeful realm, he will be an elephant or a horse that would uh, enjoy pleasures. If he's born in the wholesome, uh, blissful realm, he'll be a low human with a lot of problems and so forth. So there will be both are uh, coming together. So according to the tradition, this Kanna Sukha is not a specific Kamma. They are explaining about a person who has done good and bad, both would experience good and bad results in future. Uh, this, according to that classification, this would fall still fall into Sukha, even though there are some unwholesome thoughts happening here and there. So, so what you said that the kan, kanhasuka, kanhasuka is for a person. Not one kam. It's general. not one kam. It's not one kam. But then, so, so there is not such a person who always perform good. So, so how, how should we explain the, the uh, this is another very good, Yeah, it's a very good question. Like uh, how, how, can, how can we, some person is, doesn't fall into this and this. This is like we normally take it as from sila. For instance, a person... If you can take about, um, think about a monk or a lay devotee who is who has practiced the sila perfectly, then his all kamas are sukha. We can normally consider in the in the in the sukha way. It's not that the unwholesome mind thoughts that comes to us, like sensual desires and so forth, that can happen. Those are not a person with a good wholesome sila have unwholesome thoughts would not fall into this category. This is a person sometimes give dana, also do killing and stealing, and sometimes observe sila and do some bad deeds. Like, like he does all good and bad time to time. Like, a, for instance, a, a, a hunter would observe sila in the full moon day. So this is a person who is considered as Kanha Sukha. Now, if someone practices sila, good sila, but there can be some ups and downs, like not breaking the sila, but certain thoughts and so forth, he his kamas he's not he doesn't fall into this category. Um okay, but then, but then there is another question about akana asuka. So akana asuka, from my understanding, is refers to the makka. Exactly, exactly. So then, so it's not about the person. So so why is it <laughs> the Buddha put it in this uh, like categorization? But you said yes, that it's, the, very strange, yeah. it's a very strange thing because kanha refers to a kamma exactly. Sukha refers to a kamma exactly. Akanna sukha refers to a certain kamma. But kanna sukha, I was also surprised when I first read this, uh, is given in a different context. Uh, uh, it says uh, it's, it says that akanna sukha is a kamma. Akanna kanna sukha kamma. This is how it comes. But it is explained in the tradition. This is talking about uh, good and bad deeds done on separate occasions, and that would bring good and bad. Uh, results in a different life. 
it's not i'm not, i'm not talking about a per, like the the word kanna sukka doesn't refer to a person it refers to good and bad deeds done by a person in different occasions but in these cases they are specifically uh, kammas kanna kamma sukka kamma kanna sukka right okay thank you pante thank you yeah yeah Uh, sorry, Bante, about the sukha, the sukha one, Bante. So the baseline, if I I want to clarify my understanding, so like the baseline is five precepts, Bante, and then like, uh, for example, if we done another akusala, well, maybe eating too much, uh, watch too much television, like this. Even though this one is called akusala, but still, it's not breaking the precepts, so it can be included in the sukha. Classification is this correct, Bante? No, that's not what I mean. Uh, when we say Kanna Sukha, we refer to a uh, like like. It's wrong to say that it, they refer to a person. It says these are the deeds done in like. Actually, the entire context is explained based on a person who has done good and bad, as we explain in the Angutra Nikaya, uh, Janu Soni Sutta, like a person who do good at the same time good bad. He doesn't practice sila, but he do dana. Like some time he observe sila and break the sila. So such a miscellaneous type of a person, it's very difficult to say this is good or bad. This person is good or bad. So such person uh, is called kanna sutta. Now a question can come as Dr. Ryan asked. Now a person is observing sila, but he watches television too much. He watches. Uh, he eats too much sometimes because of. is liking does he fall yes, yes. into this category does he fall into this category to what i have studied no because this kanna sukha means like killing and giving dana sometimes killing sometimes abstaining from killing like in uposatha do so this kind of a person is what extra bit falls here like it doesn't mean that eating too much is a sukha no no it's not like that it's like eating too much is a unwholesome thing but uh this on this con it doesn't fall into this context it doesn't fall into this context so uh yeah <laughs> if i go further it can make more confusion right is it is it clear uh yes but the ethics is quite clear but the it doesn't mean that uh, uh, watching television falls into sukha no no these are oh, no, no. Not- Uh, yes but i i don't mean that like something like that is considered as sukha bante but i mean like so the uh the baseline to define which category we should uh, is like dana is a sukha kamma according to the janusoni sutta if you go a person doesn't practice sila but gives dana that is also can be found uh time to time and it's also practically we know time to time observing and non observing breaking so therefore uh Uh, dana is also sukha it's not that uh, but if someone doesn't practice sila but gives dana sure he falls into the third category so as you said baseline we can say uh, panchasila in uh, if you can if someone can practice panchasila he doesn't fall into this category okay bante uh and then bante like how how is it like the someone that is the uh included in the kanha bante like uh it's exclusively he is always doing bad bante ah uh, no 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 this kanha is whatever akusala kamma we do it's not specifically referring to a person akusala kamma would give bad results kusala kamma would give good results uh, magga kamma would eradicate the other kammas So as that's why Dr. Ryan asked. Now these three are specifically kamas, but this one has been explained in a different way. Has been explained in a different way. This is the Theravada tradition. So this is a very good fundamental. If someone wants to say, yeah, there there are good kamas, bad kamas, good and bad kamas, and neither good nor bad, no no bad kamas. So this is a fundamental that can be easily developed into an argument that uh, there are some this type of a kamma. should be considered as kanna sukha because because if this is a kamma this is a kamma this is a kamma why this is not a kamma so that's why it's obvious that 
we can bring this argument uh, uh, explanation here but the commentators the, the tradition i would say the tradition has been very strict on this because even such a kamma is still considered as kusala which is affected by akusala now there is another kamma is like akusala uh then we have uh kusalas in between and also a uh, best example i would give is uh, the bodhiraja if you remember there was a uh son uh, a one one uh, uh prince who wished to have some uh, children but uh, he didn't have any because he they have done a past akusala d that was eating the birds eggs so they didn't get wife and husband both they didn't get uh, whole uh, children in the next life in in that life so it says in the commentary now they were doing the killing they were doing the killing at least they had some thought some regret it says the regret because when you have the regret you have a compassion towards uh, the, towards the uh, birds so had they had some compassion towards the birds they there was a possibility that they would got the, got a child so what does it mean the killing is one act akusala the killing killing is always akusala but had there been some kind of a compassionate thought in between that akusala the level of that akusala would reduce would have reduced it would not affect them as it did uh in this story so likewise still this is a akusala kamma one akusala kamma affected by kusala this is a kusala kamma affected by akusala this is how it is explained in the uh among the by theravadians so that's why these two kammas would have easily qualified to be called kanna sukta or sukka kanha whatever were not put here still this kamma is sukha killing is kanha even though there are completely opposite feelings that have occurred time to time in between uh yeah so therefore this classification is based on the third classification is based on a different uh, criteria okay bante thank you very much bante sad sad oh so bante Really. Oh, may I have a question? So, mm -hmm. is uh, do you need the Kim Basinadi? You said the Pusa Buddha. Uh, it was not including uh into the twenty four Buddhas. Uh, because you go to please go to the Sutta. Uh, Apa Dana Pali. Yeah, but uh, but if we check the Buddha once, ah. Uh, If you check the Buddha ones, so the Pusa, uh, the Pusa Buddha was included. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying. So Apadana Pali Pubba Kamma Pilotika Apadana. This is the this is the uh, Sutta which explain Buddha says that his kammas, twelve kammas that he experienced, Akusala kammas. According to Burmese uh, tradition, there is thirteen. So then. uh this says in one occasion he said to pusa buddha and sangha this may it's better that they have uh, yava, uh, eat eat such food rather than it's better to give them such food host food rather than giving the food was given to the uh, offered to the humans this was his accusation both of them so he had to suffer uh in such a way but if you go into the pusa buddhas now uh the uh, akusala was yava yava is one kind of food given to like a low type of food uh and pusa buddha then in the uh, uh it was akusala kam then we go into buddha vansa pali we find another pusa buddha 
uh, he got the prophecy. Like he was got the prophecy. I don't know how to spell it. He he was prophesied to be a Buddha in future, and he was a king. To my memory, he was a, a universal monarch or someone, or universal monarch or a very special person. So, when you read the story of this Buddhisatta, of this Buddha Van Sapali, it seems like he met the Buddha. If you go to the commentary, you find he met the Buddha. He was really pleased with him, and he became a disciple. But in this Kama story, he was angry with the Buddha, and he said such a thing. So. Only point that someone can think whether he said this before he got the faith in during that Buddha's time, the Pusa Buddha who was mentioned in the Buddha Van Sapali. But when you read these two stories, you feel like they they are not matching each other. So that's why I say I said I assume that this Pusa Buddha was not the Pusa Buddha who was mentioned in the twenty four. Someone who has occurred before. Someone who has occurred before, so uh, but still I'm not confirming that. That is what I feel when I read these two stories separately. That's what I mean. I'm not confirming that. Sorry, Bandi, my connection is really poor, so I couldn't hear anything. But it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I will read it. Yeah, because of my, I dropped two times doing this, <laughs> so oh, it's okay. Cool. Uh, so my another, yeah, my another question is about because, the key uh, personality. Yeah, what I said was I just confirmed. Uh, uh, Bodhisatta was a, a king called Vijitavi. He in this occasion he was called. Uh, Bijitabi, right? Uh, Katya. Uh, he's not a king. Bijitabi uh, na Katya hutwa tas dhamma sutta. Then he ordained even in this story. Then uh, he studied dhamma. And become Tipitaka Dara. And uh, preach Dhamma. And also fulfill Sila Parami. This is what says what happened with this Buddha, Pusa Buddha. This Pusa. Then uh but uh if you go into the kubbakamma pilotika kubbakamma uh pilotika padana according to this uh it says uh i'll just give you one minute nando rao sethu uh पूरे दारों को कील मानो केवट गाने या पुष्ट साहम पावचने साव के परिभाषे यावं खाद तब बुंजे तब माच बुंजे तब साले तो इन द बुद्धा पुष्ट बुद्धा स्टाइम ही बोधिसत्ता एक्यूज़ द बुद्ध बुद्धा एंड साव कास डोंट गिव देम गुड फूड गिव देम यावा this kind of bad food that is what uh, he has said in that uh, occasion so then uh, if you go into this uh, commentary we find uh, sorry uh, buddha padane thera adi uh mm 
there was a, a place where all these uh, things were explained. But if you read this, I, I still directly cannot go into that story. A commentary story of this incident doesn't seem like this. So that's why I mentioned this Pussa should be someone else, not the uh, Bodhisattva, not the Buddha who was mentioned in the 24. Yes, Sally. Yeah. You have the question. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So regarding the King Basanari, he will become the future Buddha. So who gave the, which Buddha gave the profession said that he will become the future Buddha? Uh, nothing is mentioned. Nothing is mentioned. Nothing of this is mentioned. Nothing so is mentioned. Is, the, our, is our Gautama Buddha give this one? <laughs> no. Huh? Not, not our Buddha. Not our is Buddha. It, Okay, so is there other places mentioned? Uh, so how many eras after how many eras he will become the Buddha? Not also. That is a very nice thing. Like <laughs> it doesn't mention at all. None of the uh, Buddha other than uh, Mitteya has been mentioned. I think it was done purposefully. My personal idea is done purposefully to make otherwise people would become more and more relaxed. We still think, okay, even we miss this opportunity, there is Maitreya Buddha coming. Yeah, we have such a, but if the Buddha has said, okay, this Buddha would come after this, this Buddha would come after this. Uh, maybe the Savakas knew it, who was close to the Buddha, but they purposefully omitted it, I think, to make us uh, otherwise, I don't know whether they did it purposefully or not, but if we had, then uh, another argument is, if you knew it, you would have been very relaxed and do the do the do the paramis very easily, very nicely. But now we feel like tense. If we miss the next opportunity, we don't know when the next Buddha is going to come. Uh, so it is sure that all the Buddhas who are going to come after the uh, Mitteya, most of many of them uh, would have been uh, men, given prophesied by our Buddha also. That is the nature. But uh, no, none of the information is in our literature. None. Only uh bodhisattva uh, metteya bodhisattvas are mentioned but there are stories about some pacheka buddhas he will be a pacheka buddha in 99 eons and so forth then there is a, a, a one commentary says that normally pacheka buddhas appear during the uh, eons where buddhas appear which i which i think it's not because there are two commentaries one says they appear when there's no buddha some says they appear uh, in times buddhas appear but without meeting them such so it show it seems like they 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 appear in the buddha uh, kapas where buddhas appear but it doesn't make much sense to me because uh, the purpose of becoming pacheka buddha is to attain as soon as possible uh, whenever we fulfill the parami without waiting for a buddha so therefore uh, some about pacheka bodhisattva buddhas the mentions are there so some Based on the second point that considering uh, Pacheka Buddhas appear only during the Buddha's time, they consider in 99 yon, in 100,000 yons, there would be a Buddha. Uh, but I don't go into that uh, conclusion. Based on a Pacheka Buddha, we cannot uh, exactly say uh, a Buddha would appear in that yon. That is my personal view. But most of the stories that we find about the Pacheka Buddhas are mentioned about the ones who were born in this. Uh, in this uh, very eon or in the 91 eons from here. That was before the Vipassi Buddha. These are the information that we found about Pacheka Buddha so far. Uh, one of my friends said that he found a Pacheka Buddha who was born in a uh, Buddha Sunya eon, but we couldn't find the reference, solid reference yet. I don't know whether he, he, he doesn't remember where he read it now. Uh, I'm still personally searching for that. I am making effort when I'm free, I. I do make efforts to search such uh, information, but so far not found. Uh, so that is a one way that some interpret mentioning that Pacheka Buddha would appear in that eon. According to that commentary, uh, I think Sutta Nipata commentary or Apadana commentary, one of them. According to that, uh, Buddha has to appear in that eon. But uh, 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 most of, I think, uh, I personally don't go into that. And one of the Mahatera's also mentioned it is not necessary that uh, Pacheka Buddhas appear. In a, in a only in a kappa that buddhas appear so therefore 
there is no mentioning about a Buddha after the Mithya. Okay, okay. Thank you, Bandi. Uh, so actually, I have some other questions, but I think the time is not enough. Maybe next time. About this same thing? Uh, regarding the, like, the Sawagabarami. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, how long and so on. One question can be answered. One question. Yeah. Uh, it's because I uh, see uh, I found that they, in the Visuddhi Maga, they didn't directly mention the, the Savaga Brahmi, but they mentioned the ability of the Ega Savaga. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, especially in the Bhubha uh, Nivasa Nusa Dinyana. So, like uh, the Maha Savagas, they have to recollect uh, other people's life like uh, uh, one by one. But for the Ega Savagas, they can see the people's death moment, the duty, and they can immediately know they are Bodhisandhi as well. <laughs> so their ability yeah. is like uh, their ability is like uh, the uh, the Bajiga Buddha. But uh, lesser than that, right? But Similar. when they reflect the like, life, the, the life of they, others, they they, 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 they reflect is similar, but the distance they can reflect is deeper, right? Uh, they this uh, Ika Samagas, they can reflect life. They is like uh, uh, one asankhya, uh, oh, and one hundred thousand water cycle something like that. But Bodhi, uh, Buddha is uh, two asankhya. Because if you go into this, yes. uh, right? Uh, go. Uh, I mean, uh, this one, and so I mean, I mean, like this one. The one they recollect life is like, but uh, the ability to recollect the other people's life, that ability mm -hmm. is the same as like a Bajiga Buddha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, we have to keep in mind. If you can go into this word Asamanta Panyam in the Patisambhida Mantra. You can search this word. It says that the difference of Agasavaka's wisdom and Pacheka Buddha's wisdom is so striking that they cannot be compared at all. In some senses, yeah, we, we say when we talk about vasana, when we talk about uh, the, some abilities, about uh, uh, the recalling the past life, they seem very similar. There are similarities. I would not say no. There are similarities. But when we say the distance between these two, uh, the, the, the subcommon uh, the Patisambhida Magga itself says it's uncomparably different from each other. So Pacheka Buddhas are much, much wiser, skilled than the Agasavakas. They are, they are, it's like there are similarities in as you said, but uh, we should not compare, try to compare them. There are many in, in evidences to show uh, that. Yeah. Uh, they have been uh, differentiated from Savakas, but check with this. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm just trying not to compare, but I mean, uh, even we talk yeah. about the, Sa and the Savaga Barami, because you say from their abilities, we know they these are the, they are past the Baramis. That's why they got these abilities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also what uh, their attainments and so forth. So, yeah, it's uh, there. There are striking similarities also uh, because we don't find much. Uh, uh, they normally there is now we say Buddha's abilities, non-parallel abilities than others. But with Pacheka Buddhas and Agasavakas, we don't see much distinguish that Agasavakas Pacheka Buddhas can do this, Agasavakas cannot do this. There is no such much information about the difference between Pacheka Buddha and Savaka. But uh, generally, it's mentioned that they are, they are uh, really different from each other. So as you said, I understand, like uh, when we read the, the uh, literature, we find that there are a lot of similarities between the two. But, uh, but they, are a Buddha, they are Buddhas and they are the Savakas are Savakas. Yeah, what you said is correct. What you said is correct. Okay, thank you. So to conclude, to conclude the discussion, 
uh, at the Pubakama Pilotika Buddha Pusa, I found the uh, reference story, uh, Apadana Commentary, uh, number one, 139. So this says, he now here, according to Buddha Vansapali Attakata, sorry, Buddha Vansapali, Pali itself, Pali itself, and also Attakata, and Attakata. This is the, the he was uh, Vijitavi, uh, Bodhisattva was a person called Vijitavi, a Khatiya. He ordained, studied Dhamma, became Teptekadara, preached Dhamma, fulfilled Silapara. Now, according to that, the Kamma he did, the Pusa Buddha, it says, the story says, uh, in a certain clan, no mention about Khatiya, in a certain clan, Jati uh, Vasenacha Andabala Bhaveni. Uh, Jati was saying it under. I don't know what that means. Uh, he was uh, under Bahalabhavi, well, like, like uh, foolish due to foolishness. Due to foolishness, accused the Buddha and his disciples. Due to foolishness and uh, due to jati, jati vasen, seems like low clan, seems like, uh, and due to foolishness, he accused. So we can see this is the bodhisattva mentioned in uh, Akusala with the Pusa Buddha. This is the bodhisattva we find in the 24 uh, Buddha Vansapali. I think uh, this is very clear evidence to show that because the clan was not cert his, cert in a certain clan. He was born here. He was a Kathya, high clan. And due to his low clan and also foolishness, he accused the Buddha. But in this story, he was a well, very respected person in the society. He listened to Dhamma. Then But uh, became uh, uh, delighted and ordained, and he became. Now, step by step, we can see he 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 fulfilled the parameter. But in this case, we find a different uh, frequency. So that's why uh, I mentioned that Pusa Buddha is not this Pusa Buddha. There are two different stories. Uh, so, Bandi, it is possible for, like, for example, the, the first uh, Pusa Buddha, uh, like, before him, before he made the Buddha's teaching, his name was also Pusa Buddha, but after he made the Buddha's teaching, his name was also Pusa Buddha. It is, is it possible the same person? You mean, uh, no, no, Buddha is different. Okay, Pusa Buddha, but you mean this person and this person, right? Yeah. That's why I say it, there's a possibility that this person before studying the Dhamma accused the Buddha, right? There's a possibility that we can yeah. say like, like it happened to Jyotipala. Before he's ordained, he accused the possible Buddha. But we can see the commentary says in a certain clan, due to his low class and foolishness. So here his clan is very perfectly mentioned, Katya. It's not low, it's high. So I think these two, up to here, it doesn't, they are contradicting. Can you see this? Yes, but like you said there, the first one is the come from the commentary, right? And the second one is directly from the Pali. This is from Pali, yeah. right? Pali and commentary. And this one, this is about the Buddha Vansa Pali. This comes because Buddha Vansa Pali doesn't explain about this incident. Only the Buddha Pusa is the name is same, so it's not. I think it's uh, we can assume that they are the same one, but the information that we have this is Vijitabi Katya. Then the the second Buddha Pusa Buddha, uh, the commentarial information says that the Bodhisattva was of a different clan, different personage, different personality. Uh, I think uh, because we cannot say with the text doesn't say what happened during his time. So if we omit this story, if we didn't have this story in the commentary, 
yeah one can argue one can assume that this happened in the if this story was not there as you said uh, if only this was mentioned one can assume this vijitavi katya accused the buddha before listen to the ma yeah possibility is there but when we have such a story directly mentioned in the commentary uh, because we cannot uh, judge its authenticity right yes yeah we cannot judge its authenticity and we cannot re neither we can reject it no we can accept it because there is no uh, text to reject this story so if we go with the tradition we come into a conclusion that these are two different buddhas and this pusta buddha so there was one pusta buddha within the 24 and there is no other pusta buddha so then the conclusion comes that this pusta buddha incident has happened before the bodhisatta met dipankara so it means before the destined uh, becoming niyata bodhisatta that's why i mentioned that that story uh, was should be quite different because of these inconsistent not inconsistencies like different information of the two different stories yes yeah hi pante Go ahead. Now it's a yeah, yeah. It's going to be a short. It's going to be a short yeah, okay. comment. Yeah, I just, okay. I just want to have a comment on the uh, Sayale's question about the uh, King uh, Basenadi. Oh, okay. So um, there is a a book. Well, it it's written in Vietnamese. It was composed by a a quite well known Vietnamese monk, mm -hmm. uh, Mahathera. Okay. And then it looks like he 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 wrote that book based on the Buddha Wangsa. And in there, he mentioned that the uh, the king Basenadi is going to become the Buddha, uh, oh. one Asangkhaya after the, uh, the 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 Buddha Mitaya, and his name is going to be uh, Dhamma Raja Muni. The Buddha Dhamma Raja Muni. One Asangkhaya after after the uh, the the Buddha Mitaya. The name is Dhamma Raja Muni. Yes, and then and then it's uh, so he also mentioned that uh, yeah. So the king, you mean the you know the the being the king Pasenadi, he was uh, confirmed to be the Buddha by the Buddha Kona Gamana. So it is the Buddha Kona Gamana. It looks like he he's one of the twenty four Buddhas, right? Yeah. Because this Buddha Kona Gamana, now we can we can analyze the time period, right? Okay, shall we quickly? Yeah, so yeah. But it says here it just confirmed. He's confirmed. It's not like he's the first Buddha to prophesy, like in the yeah. case of yeah, yeah. So Dipankara to Konanya. On Danya, there was one Asenke Yagam. Right? So Konanya to our Buddha, Gotama, is one, uh, three Asenke Yagam. Plus hundred thousand. So when we say Gotama and Mitte, yeah, both the same kappa. Then so Mitte, yeah, to Dhamma Raja. If we consider this, okay, Dhamma Raja. Is one asankhya. So in the end, Dhamma Rajas Parami period is four asankhya and one hundred thousand aeons. It means. He should be a Panyadika. 
how, how do we know that, Bhante? How do we yeah. know that uh, this Parami period is for Asankhya and a hundred year, Bhante? Because uh, it says he he uh, will be a Buddha in one Asankhya after Mithya, right? Yes, Bhante. And he got prophesized by Kondanya. No, 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 no. It's not he. So he go Nagamana, not Kondanya. Go Nagamana. But he, it doesn't Not say Kondan, that. Kondan. Yes, Konagamana. Uh, but in then here, it doesn't say that. The, uh, so the uh, between uh, the Buddha Konagamana and the future Buddha Dhamma Raja, the relationship is not exactly like the same as the uh, the Buddha Dipankara and the Buddha Gotama. It's not like the first one to to make the uh, uh, prophecy. They just oh, say okay. that he confirmed. Yeah, he confirmed. Right, right, right. Buddha Kona Gamana. Okay, yeah. right, right. Kona Gamana, not Kona. Yeah. Then uh, uh, we cannot confirm. Yeah. yeah. Then he has to have started from long before, right? Yes. If he yes, definitely. Us, like but yeah. this information, where did he get from? We have to find out. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like, yeah, this, this Vietnamese uh, Mahathir, he wrote it in Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to see if you know, there is any reference in here. So. Well, if yeah. I find any more information, I'll, I'll let everyone know. Sure, sure. Please, please, you will come. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. For, what is the name of the book? Well, it's Vietnamese book, but, oh, okay. but the translation is like, it looks like he composed it based on the, the Buddha Wangsa. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if Buddha Wangsa Pali or Atakata or anything. Just uh, no, uh, no, 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 surely not. Yes. We don't have it in Atakata. I see. Yeah. Maybe he got it from some other sources. Yeah, like yeah, to... definitely. Yes. Okay, it was a very interesting discussion, all about uh, uh, because of Kosala and Paramis. A lot of discussions we had. Okay, so uh, we'll conclude that we call it a day, and we meet tomorrow with the Sutta ready. Okay, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank, you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Sadhu. Thank you very much, Bante. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.